Hey guys, Hella Bella, and in this video, I'm going to be going over the don'ts of Gulf Shores, Alabama. So this is all of the things that you don't want to do when you're visiting Gulf Shores. This is probably also applicable to Orange Beach and Fort Morgan. Those areas are all kind of within a 10 minute drive of one another. My boyfriend and I recently finished a one month vacation in Gulf Shores and we stayed right near the beach, about a five minute walk from the beach. And Gulf Shores is an incredibly affordable affordable and fun beach town and there's a lot of things that you can do. There's paddle boarding, there's kayaking, of course there's parasailing, my boyfriend did skydiving, um, there's going to the beach, there's going to restaurants, mini golf, tons of things for you to do whether you are traveling solo or you're a family. I think that you can really get a lot of enjoyment out of visiting this location but I'm going to give you my 10 tips for things that you don't want to do while you go to Gulf Shores because my family has been traveling there for about 10 years or so and every pretty much every other summer usually we'll go down there so this is what i've learned along the way so the first tip is don't come to gulf shores during peak season unless you want to share the beach with everyone and their mama and you want to wait in line at restaurants because peak season usually is the summer months anytime that someone is going to be out of school families will be traveling down there's going to be a music festival in may so they're always having events in gulf shores but when you come during the off season you'll have a lot more of a chance to kind of do your own thing and not have to wait we've personally taken one trip in uh, mid-April. That's this past trip that we took. And then we've also come to Gulf Shores in November and I've had good luck coming in September. If you're going during the off season, it's not going to be as warm so you may not be able to swim. So if that's a priority to you, you could go during peak season. But for us, it's not such a big deal. We'll dip our toes in when it's kind of cold, but it's something that we definitely, you know, realize the trade-offs of not having to share the beach with a ton of people because Gulf Shores gets really crowded. It's not a very big area. So what happens is it just becomes very congested. The second thing you don't want to do is don't book a condo that is not close enough to the beach because a lot of them look like they're going to be beachfront but what it is is they're several streets over from the beach so you can kind of still see the beach and they try to call it beachfront. In the reality, unless you're about a five minute walk from the beach, it becomes very difficult to kind of cart all of your stuff back and forth. Most of the condos that you'll see like the Phoenix are right on the beach. And then you've got some cheaper ones that are on the road, uh, West Beach Boulevard, that'll be on the other side of it. So you'll have to cross the road and then go um, on one of the public beach access points. If you're staying in a condo that is on the beach, you'll usually have your own way to get to the beach via the condos access. So they'll build their own boardwalk or their own beach access point. So I would caution that when you are going to book a hotel, I know it's easy to get excited and to just click book and not do all of the research, but make sure that you get a condo that is close enough to the beach to be accessible to you and especially for your needs. If you're traveling with young children, you don't want to be hoofing it across the street back and forth over and over again. You want to make sure that you are close distance to the beach. The third thing that you don't want to do is get impatient with the traffic. The traffic is Usually a normal part of going to the beach, especially when you get about an hour away, no matter what direction you're coming from, you're going to face traffic. Um, if you are in Gulf Shores during peak season, there's only really a couple main roads. So it just kind of is part of it. Don't get too impatient and don't get too upset. If you need to go somewhere, like for instance, if you have something booked, make sure that you leave well ahead of time to get there because you may get stuck in traffic, especially if you're going in Foley. We spent some time at the outlet malls in Foley and so getting there and back from our condo was about a 25 minute ride so just be prepared to have a little bit of traffic when you're going uh, to Gulf Shores. Tip number four is don't spend all your time in one place. Make sure that you go out and explore, drive around, try to see some new things because I think my family kind of got comfortable at one point when we were going down there and it seemed like we always went to the same restaurants, went to the same hotels, the same areas. You know, we, we did the same thing and as I've gotten older, I've branched out a little bit more and I've realized that there's so many things that we didn't do while we were there in the last decade and I've gotten to go back as an adult and experience some of that just because I've been a little bit more I guess exploring and a little bit more open-minded. So don't spend all your time in the same place. Make sure that you get out and you explore. Now this next tip, a lot of people have had their vacations completely ruined by this. So do not forget to protect your skin 
from the sun. The worst thing you can do is get burnt on your vacation and then you're just spending your time in the condo when you have three or four days left and everyone else is out having a good time. Now, even though it may not seem super sunny, even if it's overcast, you still need to put on sunscreen because that sun comes through. Even if you're under an umbrella, make sure to put on sunscreen. We usually put on sunscreen before we go down and then we'll reapply just about every two hours that we're out. We always make sure that we put on a ton of sunscreen and then like if you're wearing a swimsuit make sure to lift up your swimsuit and then put sunscreen underneath because your swimsuit will shift and move and that's usually where I get burned is areas like that. You can still see my face is a little bit red and warm from being at the beach for a month um, but overall we did not get burnt because we just kept on applying and kept on applying so make sure that you do that and also in terms of protecting your skin if you can wear a hat and sunglasses that's going to protect your eyes and the hat obviously will make it a lot harder for you to get burnt on the top of your head. Sometimes I'll burn like in my part. So definitely make sure that you stay protected from the sun. If you don't learn anything else, I mean, I know I'm stressing this, but if you don't get anything else from this video, please make sure that you protect yourself from the sun because a lot of people have been burned in Gulf Shores. Tip number six is don't ignore the flag warning system. So what I'm gonna tell you is that a lot of people will ignore this and a lot of people unfortunately have had accidents, they've drowned and it's just best to be on the side of caution when it comes to the waves. A lot of people think that they can swim but they don't realize that there are rip currents. So this is the flag warning system and it's gonna tell you when it's okay to swim and when it's not. Um, a lot of times there will be a lifeguard out so you can ask them but um, typically, you know, if there's a red flag you don't want to go in very deep. Um, double red flag, I believe, means you're not allowed to swim at all. And of course, purple is dangerous wildlife. It usually means jellyfish, um, but that is something that you want to pay attention to is that flag system because, you know, there's nothing worse than disrespecting nature because nature is, you know, it's been around for a long time. It's not something that we should try and, you know, test fate with. I think it's really important to obey the flag warning system. Number seven is don't buy groceries in Gulf Shores if you can help it. Try to get the groceries 45 minutes away, an hour away, because what's gonna happen is you're gonna go to either Gulf Shores Walmart, Foley Walmart, Orange Beach Walmart, and they're gonna be absolutely packed. Doesn't matter if you go to Walmart or Publix, if you're going during like peak season, there's gonna be way more people there. Um, luckily, when we just went, it wasn't super bad because I was able to go on like a weekday. If you're gonna go on a weekend, it's obviously gonna have more people, so if you come down on a Saturday um, you know it's easier to go to your condo and then wake up really early and get groceries if you can go when it's not peak times so that's something that I would recommend but for the most part I think it's best if you can get groceries outside of the area now it does depend on how long you're staying and whether or not you plan on going out to eat a lot but I would say if you can get your staples outside of the tourist area and also for alcohol you can go to the ABC store and you'll skip those expensive prices of like liquor stores or of course you can bring it with you from your hometown, wherever you're traveling from, or just get it like an hour or two outside of that Gulf Shores region. Number eight is don't forget about Fort Morgan. This is a really cool place and it's about a 15 or 20 minute drive from the main areas. And what it is, is there is actually when you get to the end of the Fort Morgan Road that you'll be going down, there is a historic fort that you can tour. I think it's like eight or ten dollars to get in. You can walk all around it and there's also a beach that you can access there. Um, great little day trip. Honestly, half a day is probably enough you can bring some food with you or you can go eat at one of the restaurants in Fort Morgan there's not a ton of restaurants but Fort Morgan is definitely something that's kind of cool to check out it's very remote area I think that you'll really enjoy the fort if you like like Civil War history and American history because they've got a lot of cool things there you can take pictures you can kind of look around there's a lot of different rooms where the soldiers were at um, they still got a lot of things that are still the way that they left them so it's really cool to be able to tour Fort Morgan if you get a chance number Number nine is don't forget to stay hydrated while you're on the beach, but also just while you're in Gulf Shores in general, because the humidity gets a lot of people. If you're not coming from a humid environment, it's a lot to take in and it can be like really draining to the system, especially if you're going to drink while you're down there. I would recommend just getting like a refillable water bottle and taking it with you on the beach. That way you have plenty of water. Number 10 is 
don't skip the local trails. You can have so much fun on those trails. I actually got a chance to go on several of them while I was in Gulf Shores. I went to the uh, Bon Secours Nature Preserve. I also went to the Jeff Friend Trail, which is like a really good trail if you want a short hike. Um, really not even a hike, it's a flat boardwalk. And the good thing about Gulf Shores is that it is a flat region. So whenever you're going on trails, for the most part, you're not gonna have to do any uphill climbs. It's really relatively easy. And I think that the trails, you know, showcase a different part of Gulf Shores that you can't see in the tourist areas because it's nature that has not been cut down or you know built on top of and so it's really cool to be able to see stuff out there. I saw a ton of wildlife while I was there. You'll see more birds, more lizards and things like that when you're not around the town area. So I'd recommend going to check out some of those trails if you get a chance. Honestly they're all within a 10 or 15 minute drive so it's something that you could get up early and do in the morning and then still have a full beach day ahead of you. It just depends on what you like to do on your vacation and how you like to spend your time. All right, guys, I hope that you enjoyed my don'ts of Gulf Shores, Alabama. There is so much to see and do there. If you're interested in anything else Gulf Shores related, you can check out the other Gulf Shores videos on my channel. I've got a few up about the fishing pier and some of the hiking trails that I went to and just our overall experience of living in Gulf Shores for a month. And I wanna say that it's a super fun coastal town. Everyone's friendly and you can have a great vacation here. So if you're interested, definitely check it out and try to book yourself a weekend or a weekend Gulf Shores. I hope that you enjoyed it guys and I will catch you in the next video.